Hey everyone! Today we're going to discuss the secrets, easter eggs, and some other references you might have missed watching the newly released Lightyear. If you haven't watched the movie yet, press pause, watch it, and then come back because we're going to discuss some spoilers. If you liked the video, be sure to leave us a like and subscribe to the channel to not miss out on any future content regarding your favorite animation movies. Without further ado, let's get started! In the Toy Story movies, you can't isolate Buzz Lightyear from his Space Ranger costume. Even after taking a few minutes beyond the bubble headgear in Lightyear, Buzz has seemed to become the most himself when he's decked in the Green Galactic Alliance costume. The Space Ranger outfit certainly appears in a few successive variations all through Lightyear, with the original version from the early part and the enhanced version in the final episodes being the two key ones. They both seem to have a lot of details from Toy Story that longtime enthusiasts will doubtlessly acknowledge. The Lightyear suit is an exact reconstruction of the toy under the three vibrantly colored knobs on Buzz's chest slab, one of whom is again and again used to stimulate stealth mode, and the wrist networker he's clearly talking in and out of is much more than a bumper sticker this time about. Or, at the very slightest, the latest design shown at the end of the movie is. The slightly older outfits have a forearm beam of light and a big red tab rather than a switch on its front, which is brought to light to be the despicable surrender button. Though by the end of the movie, Buzz and his squad have all succeeded in getting their fancy new Space Ranger attired, something that every kid in 1995 desired. Buzz Lightyear is an awesome gadget, as the Toy Story films repeatedly tell us. He has karate chop action, a beam on his forearm, and a flying launcher. All of these special capacities have been used in Lightyear, with a few of them being extremely crucial. Buzz exhibits his karate chop action across many places all through the film, which expresses a much more powerful and flexible gathering of fighting skills. His forearm beam is not included in the old Space Ranger costume prototype, but in the third conduct, Buzz mixes it up by attaching a relatively small handheld laser pointer to his forearm for convenience. The instrument comes in useful all through his struggle with Zerg, and when the fresh Space Ranger outfits are disclosed at the end of the scene, they all have forearm laser beams assembled along. Pixar retains Buzz's flying wingsuit hidden for a large percentage of the movie. Buzz only jumps the flippers to assist keep the vessel on track as the rest of the players rejoin the surroundings in their ship. Everything continues to work out. However, the re-entry could be categorized as plunging with aesthetics. Alicia Hawthorne is a hugely important secondary character in Lightyear. The Lightyear movie introduces her as a Star Command soldier and Buzz's workmate. Her real surname must have been directly influenced by SpaceX's head office in Hawthorne, California. In the following scene, there is a massive fuel stability display case, trying to imply that the crystalline sources of power are volatile and unpredictable, and yet are mainly accountable for Buzz's space launch breakdown. Pixar is well known for parodying Star Wars in its Buzz Lightyear narratives. Zerg is primarily a big, ridiculous magenta Darth Vader with the designation of Emperor Palpatine. And if you started to think Lightyear was the final stage of Buzz's Star Wars quotes, you'd be totally incorrect. The big one in Lightyear is much less evident than those in the Toy Story movies, but that should be noticeable to fans of both installments. Socks, Buzz's cyborg cat buddy, can converse with multiple operating systems via connector on the edge of his tail. When he commences hacking, his head starts spinning 360 degrees and he begins in earnest to mumble beep bop beep bop repetitively. It's hilarious, if simple, choke, and it appears to be a direct link to R2-D2's own cybercrime behaviors in Star Wars. While R2 may not be the only famous sci-fi machine to decrypt into computer networks, Hal Sox appears to be going about his job and the noises he creates are virtually identical to the robot in specific. Seems like each and every galactic hero probably requires a robot partner with a USB connection. According to the Toy Story chronology, Lightyear was launched in 1995. While the movie could have easily dismissed that information, later on, it continues to be a significant part of the overall aesthetic. Much of the movie is influenced by ancient sci-fi brands, including Buck Rogers. However, there are a few specifics that genuinely feel peculiarly 90s. For instance, all through Buzz's first hypersonic missile flight test, his flight computer, Ivan, begins to break down. Buzz retrieves Ivan from the vessel's framework, displaying it to be anything but a jagged plug-in, and keeps blowing into it as though it were an NES cartridge. Yes, of course, the automatic pilot instantaneously begins working as designed. That is not the only 90s information that shows up. Several of the electronic monitoring systems in Lightyear have the bulky overlays of 1990s desktop displays, which makes perfect sense for a movie set in 1995. Clearly, Lightyear gathers from all ages of sci-fi, but its primary design feels like a contemporary animated feature film. But it's still fascinating to see how the creators perpetrated the mid-1990s aesthetic in a number of different ways. 
There are a lot of dialogues in Lightyear that are elevated straightforwardly from the Toy Story blockbusters. Some of them seem to be evident to anyone who has seen the earlier movies. For instance, at the beginning of Lightyear, while Buzz and Alicia are investigating the alien globe, Buzz publishes a task log trying to comment on the scenery, monitoring that the landscape appears to be uncomfortable. Of course, in the initial Toy Story, he says exactly the same thing while strolling about on Andy's bed. There are so many of these little reference points all through Lightyear. Masterpieces like, I'm Buzz Lightyear, I'm always sure, and not today, Zerg, will actually stand out to everyone who pays heed to them. And they add a soft finish to the movie by integrating it with Toy Story. It's interesting to see how the toy Buzz takes inspiration and personality characteristics from its fantastical self, and the innumerable buzzwords are a great way to showcase this. The Toy Story movies paint a more attractive environment. The universe is visually appealing and seems to be pleasant. However, Lightyear depicts somewhat depressing illustrations. Rather than a vivacious configuration and backstory, it seems to be dusty and robotic, comparable to Pixar's WALL-E. Another indication is indeed the dawn-like brightness. Lightyear's climax foretells a promising future for Buzz, his mates, and the Galactic Alliance. The Space Ranger organization is reinstated with slashing and advanced technologies, and Buzz's squad is officially recognized for elevated deployments. Their first mission is to support experiments in Sector 4's Gamma Quadrant. If you've ever seen Toy Story, you might acknowledge that destination. When Buzz initially arrives in Andy's room, he affirms that he is garrisoned in Sector 4's Gamma Quadrant. The position is stated again in Toy Story 2, where Buzz's computer game fight with Zerg occurs. Given that perhaps the evil monarch is found to be completely awake at the end of Lightyear, an updated model of that combat could actually occur in a spin-off. In a particular instance, it's pleasant to see Pixar adhering to the ridiculous mythology they've developed over the years. Because the Buzz toy has all of his fantasy self's remembrances, it logically follows that he would have a deep relationship with Sector 4's Gamma Quadrant. Much of the plot of Lightyear tends to revolve around crystallic fusion, the sci-fi procedure through which Star Command and its representatives accomplish hyperspeed in their space vehicles. When Buzz and the other inhabitants of SC-01 collapse at the start of the movie, their old combustion nucleus are torn down, attempting to force them to try out new things with the available materials in the desperate hope of building a different one. It's a decades-long method that entails Buzz falling short of multiple studies with crystallites that are just fractionally off. Eventually, his machine partner, Sox, emerges with the perfect workaround, leading to the establishment of a comprehensive crystallic fusion center. Of course, crystallic fusion was always a core component of Toy Story mythology. In the original movie, all through Buzz and Woody's first discussion, Buzz presents a variety of questions to his prospective best mate, choosing to believe himself to have arrived on an alien world. In the naive hope of restoring his vessel, he ponders to Woody about readily accessible forms of energy. Do you still use carbon fuels, or have you unearthed crystallic fusion? He asks of Woody, who retorts, completely baffled, we've got double A's. In the majestic framework of factors, this is a small thing entombed in a passing remark, so it's soothing to see Lightyear remain committed to the core principle in its own narrative. Lightyear wouldn't have been thorough without appropriate combat between Buzz and Zerg, and the movie actually delivers that. The two are actively involved in a protracted fight that stretches Zerg's battleship and even stretches to the open area just underneath it, with Buzz ultimately springing up triumphant. While not a complete duplicate, the Lightyear fighting bears resemblance to the Zerg confrontations in the Toy Story movies. For instance, the episode in which Buzz leaps and front flips over all of Zerg before having turned to rapidly shoot a laser back is directly lifted from the Buzz Lightyear computer game that Rex tries to play at the beginning of Toy Story 2. Thank goodness the genuine Buzz is more blessed than Rex. Of course, the final round against rivals Quarrel and Lightyear, which happens in space, offers an elegant interaction between both of them. We all knew this was coming, but it was still fascinating to hear. Zerg demands Buzz to prepare to die, and Buzz replies, not today, Zerg. That's it for today. Have you noticed some of these secrets already? Did we leave out another secret or Easter egg? Let us know in the comments down below. Be sure to leave us a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more content on the biggest upcoming blockbusters. Until next time.